What is going on, guys? I go by the name of Cleo Thomas, aka okay, Mr. Slick Living. I am Patrick Cloud. I am the Anomaly Will Pharaoh. We are the RK Tokens, and this is Coin Toss. This podcast is brought to you by Gridiron Gaming and powered by the PFRPA, and of course, it's produced by Thunder Studios. Absolutely, man. We got to jump right in. We're right back. Smash Bowl. Let's get to it. In this rule set for Group A8 for the Week 8, uh, each player begins every set by selecting five characters. The players are locked into using only those five characters for the entire set, and they can only use each character once, meaning they have to switch characters after every game, even if they won. I would not last after the first round of this. You guys yep. know this. I can admit that. I can admit that. One character, character clean. clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you're admitting it now. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, listen, embrace the fact of the truth. It is what it is. Until you can knock me off with my one character, what is there to worry about? That's all I'm saying. Epic Gabriel and Skittles move on to stage two in January, and that's going to be January 3rd, which will be the start of uh, week eight. Yes. Yes, indeed. And of course, the final players who advanced to uh, stage two were, in fact, Gabriel. Um, Epic Gabriel, excuse me, uh, Romero, the group's uh, second seed, and of course, Tanner Skittles Jordan. I always got to look out for Tanner Skittles Jordan coming through the paint in the fourth seed. Surprisingly, though, the first seed of the pool, Samuel Robert the Buzz Buzzby, man, one of the favorites to win the entire tournament was eliminated by Skittles. It looks like Bugsby got the ax 86 off the menu by mm -hmm. Skittles. I guess he couldn't taste the rainbow. I'm going to go ahead and stop. I saw a glimpse of Sephiroth in the buzz versus Skittles, and the only appearance in the tournament ultimately going the way of Skittles. Shouldn't have done that. I, I mean, look, listen, I'm always going to shoot my shot, OK? But you can see these folks continuing to shoot their shot and becoming the greatest Smash Bros. tournament and only one of the best tournaments that we have. And of course, that is the Smash Bowl. You can check that out every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time and of course, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can only watch it on Thunder Gaming's Twitch channel. That's twitch.tv slash Thunder Gaming LA. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you follow so you can stay locked in. And if you need to catch up, need to learn about where the bracket is right now in this current tournament, you can also go check out the Smash GG page. And that's going to be at smash.gg slash tournament slash smash bowl slash mmxxi slash details it's going to be written somewhere on here so i hope you aren't trying to write <laughs> it yeah, so out for the bracket man so we can't wait to see these folks return to see who's going to take it all we're getting down to the wire guys it's about to, we're about to crown somebody so i'm excited oh, um, almost done with the, almost done with the smash bowl but looking forward uh there's there is some new things in gaming, and it's 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 troubling me. I don't know how to feel about it. Will just brought it up before we started filming. Guys, shall we talk about this new gaming console that KFC just dropped? Yes, Kentucky Fried Chicken, that one. It's called the KF console, and this is 100% real, and it's said to bring the end to console wars. Are you guys are you guys up on this? Are you guys looking at this? I'm looking at it right now. Um, listen, I don't know listen, what to say. Listen, as a chairman of the heavyweight society, sir, um, if you didn't think this didn't come across our desk in our meeting, we been knew this was coming. Okay, y'all have a meeting this morning. But no, 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 no. We we we've had a meeting for this for about a year now. Like, listen, <laughs> we, yo, we we got to figure out how to get into this video game stuff. And then, lo and behold, we were introduced to air fryer. And then that's when we started planning our strike. And now it's here. KFC just had the highest dollars. This could have been the Popeye's console. That's what I was shooting for. Orange with a P in the front, but KFC got it instead. But yes, this is a legit video game. This is a legit console. Like This is no BS. A, uh, a company by the name of Cool Masters is developing this console. And not only is it just a console, so just, just I just Cleo, this I feel like this more pertains to you because you eat craft blue box mac and cheese, and I'm only saying that not as an insult, but to go, you like stuff quick, you like to get your stuff ready to go, correct? 
This is true. This is true. Will. All right, let me let me paint you a picture. Let me get my let me get my Morbius on. Imagine, Cleo, if I could tell you that you could reheat your chicken while also enjoying your PlayStation games in 4K quality. He can do that right now. Yeah, with, with, with the air fryer in the kitchen. I'm okay. With, I don't need to have my fried chicken console sitting next to my desk. This thing has three USB ports, a microphone input, and you mean to tell me the actual hard drive and the fans aren't going to melt in 325 degree heat? So, right, man. So you 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 not interested? Is what you said. I'm telling you, this is this is dumb. I'm not interested. I don't want this thing. It's although, awesome. although I did let me finish. Although, I like the shape of it because it's like a bucket of chicken. So I want it. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you are getting it. It does I say it's reminiscent, to, it's reminiscent to the shape of the iconic KFC bargain bucket, but it also contains yeah. an Intel. NUC9 extreme compute element as well as a swappable GPU slot with the power of two nigga it sells chicken it makes chicken and and they're trying to spice it up with ooh Seagate Barracuda one terabyte SSDs it is a chicken making machine that also plays video games and my concern is there's no way the games aren't going to be trash there's no way what you ain't ready for Cur colonel's frenzy you not ready for that the colonel oh frenzy God. chicken counter strike come on man these things are gonna be fire rotisserie gold honor I this can't is the wait. highest That's idea cool. ever someone really looked at the air fryer and was like i bet i can play a video game off of this i KFC. bet i can play a video game <laughs> that's a, it's a pc so like yo you're pulling up steam and you're downloading all of the the among us and the fast phobias and all the other crazy stuff on steam and you're gonna play those games on this kfc bucket looking pc console that happens to also fry your chicken it, does it, it fry does it or does it heat it up it heats it up so it uses the heat, heat up. inside of the bucket uh i'm sorry the console to reheat your food. So it's just like, yo, if you order some KFC, your strips got a little cold and so did your wedges, just pop that slide out, put it right there. Let the heat from the console as you play reheat your food. There is a this there is, is a uh, a chicken chamber that keeps the console cool whilst whilst simulate uh, simultaneously keeping meals warm. So I don't think it fries the chicken. That would be insane if it was heating no, up no. raw chicken and you were trying to run Call of Duty's gigantic game at the same time. Um, I'm not sure, but like Cleo said, I'm probably getting it. Right, you know, you know like who, why would, as us as the arcade tokens pass this up? Like to we not lived have with a, Cyberpunk. Right, we did, oh, and we all bought that. We all bought oh. Cyberpunk, we deserve a win. We deserve I'm pretty a win. sure it's documented. I said this on the on Gridiron Gaming and, and the coin toss. I said that yo, Cyberpunk's gonna disappoint. And ladies oh, and gentlemen, low on the ball. Disappoint is not even Hold on, hold on, Pat Cleo gotta run through all the IPs to tell us that. Yeah, I had to run through them all, bro. Uh, <laughs> you gonna run through crisis refund, tomorrow and tell us. Refund. For the game, they pulled it from the actual PlayStation Store, guys. That is a Xbox. big. I've never what? seen it. Xbox, I've well. never Xbox seen it. also has pulled it as well. Marvel's Avengers is considered disappointing, even though we loved it. It didn't make its money back. That's disappointing. You know, Anthem. Everybody would really thought it was going to be dope. It wasn't as dope as people thought. That's disappointing. I have never seen not only. <laughs> them pulling it off of it but refunds th that's a never mind that's a this we don't want this never happened they're not even gonna try to re oh this is it's got to be bad it's like a decade's worth of promotion yeah but also, I, too, I didn't, 2012 go ahead will but i was gonna ask like have y'all ever even like returned a digital game before i don't even know how to do it yeah like that's i didn't the know thing that, that i can't do it Okay, so I, because again, you know, like you're a little bit more in the games than I am. Now. So I was just thinking about, Lorman, I'm CDs, but I was like, do you, can you even return a digital game? So the fact that you can return a digital download and get your money back, wow. After all the delays, too? Man, is this, is this the first time this has ever happened? 
Because I feel like gaming companies are shook now. Like that, you could do that. I thought anybody who buys it, that's going to be going towards us recouping this L. But nah. I, I, I've seen I've seen companies reissue a refund if they didn't like it. I've never seen it to this scale with this much hype and promotion behind it, this big of a title, or to have it to where the company itself is telling them, yo, take all this stuff off and bring it back. Most of the time it'd be like, yo, let us fix the patch. We'll give y'all an update. We're sorry for the inconvenience. Just give us a second. But this is just like, yo, there's so many bugs in this that they're just like, pull it. Yo, you're right. I thought it was just PlayStation. No, refund for your PC, refund for the Xbox. And PlayStation made it very simple. There's literally a link that you click. You sign in with your PSN. You literally click click here to submit refund requests, and you click done. That's it. Wow, guys. Well, hey, we <laughs> lived through it. Literally bigger than them redesigning Sonic in the Sonic movie. Because when that happened, I was like, y'all were bullied by the internet into that? You redesigned Sonic? But yeah, this is like, man, forget all this promotion. Take return the game, and you can't buy it even if you don't care. That's wild to me. They now, they listen, must have. <clears throat> now listen, hear me out. They bringing it back. Just hear me out. I know why they bringing it back. Cyber Fry twenty forty nine. I'm telling you, Colonel Sanders, futuristic mm -hmm. with all the pieces. You know what I'm saying? Shooting hot grease out the tube and stuff. Fighting for the franchise restaurant wars. There's only a few left. And he's trying to so, remain standing. So Ronald McDonald shows up. The Burger King guy shows up. Nah, Jack Burger in the King Box guy shows up. That's who run everything. You man. know why they're not coming? Because the restaurants are doing well. What is KFC doing? Are they about to be out of here? The, they had a Lifetime movie. I don't even think anybody bought or watched that. I think it was just like, look, at this is actually real. I didn't hear anything about that. And now they're dropping consoles. Like, they, what are y'all doing? Pat, what you are right. you? Hey, you wonder how you know that's true? Because KFC ain't introduced nothing new on their menu. Mm -mm. Nothing this new has dropped. A, this isn't even a restaurant drop. This is just we're in gaming now. Yeah, you you ain't heard oh. nothing new about we bringing like Nashville chicken to KFC. Like nothing. They just like nope. We still got our menu, but we got a console coming out. The thing about it is like Twitch has, I mean, uh, KFC has has been dabbling in gaming for some time. Like I remember they, they launched a Twitch channel. There was rumors of them getting ready to like actually sponsor a team, like have a KFC esports team. Like that was a thing. Um, for them to roll out an entire PC guys, like with, with real USB ports and with a real microphone input, that is just amazing. And yes, I think we're all, we're gonna play it. You really think that there's a mic because it's going to have online play? No, you can play games. It's, 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 it's a PC. PC. It's a it's mini computer. PC. Yeah, like this is going to have Windows, whatever we're on right now. Oh, so you can run Steam games on here. Yeah, that's, so that's what that. Yeah. Imagine playing Little Nightmares on the KF console. I, I don't need to. I need KFC exclusives before I buy it. I didn't know it was just. <laughs> there we go. I need KFC exclusives, I like like uh like Will said, either remixes of games we already know, like Cyber Fried, or mm. I don't know a regular one like like a two D Colonel Sanders game or something like that. I that would that would sell me. Not even gonna lie. Yeah, that would sell me too. I ain't gonna front. It. it could be basic as hell too. That's crazy though, man. So, it's just like just oh yeah, what you gonna say, girl? I was gonna say KFC had to get out of the Twitch running because they had a bucket of chicken emote, and you can imagine what Twitch's online community did with that in chats. They ran the racist jokes through the damn roof. They had to get out of yeah. Twitch, bro. Oh like, how, damn! How, how We're used to Xbox coming? online. We are not used to KFC chicken console online. Oh, that's gonna be a rough place <laughs> for us. <laughs> yeah, you oh, warming up man. your chicken. Yeah, round one. You already warming up your chicken? I actually don't have any chicken today. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you got your three piece out of the console, huh? About to shoot right, something up? As much as I'll do on Thunder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept it PG. I kept it PG. But it's just, so, it's just so cool, though. Like, not again, not the, the console, but to see the fact that, like, yo, as, um, 
where we first started with video games, when people just thought it was a waste of time, it was just ruining our brains and stuff like that to where a staple in fast food industry has came together to realistically make a video game console. That is insane. And it big ups to video games. Off-brand. Very off brand. Yeah, big, big ups to gaming for feeling like they needed to do that. But Soldier Boy did as well. So it, yes. it's not like every move into gaming is a good one. <laughs> but we'll see, how it is. we'll see how it is. Maybe we'll do an arcade token to KFC Twitch when we all get ours. What, do you, what pr- price point do you think would be fair for this? Whatever an air fryer is plus $10? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're looking at $93 for this one? <laughs> no. for they going to push it. We're yeah. going to get like $1,200. It's going to be like $1,200 to $1,400. I'm calling that. Over a well, rack? I mean, they, they, they yes. It's a, it's a PC. It's a hold literal on. computer. Hold on. Let me see. I can. I can. I can. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see this real quick. So, so you can like web search and stuff on it. Go on YouTube and all that? Yes. Yes. Oh, shit. No, nah, hey, bro. Yeah. Because it also, ooh, wow. Because it got a solid state drive in this. It's it a two, two terabyte. terabyte it's a, that's crazy. No, nah, that's it's a gonna lot. Be so, yeah, he may be right. Yeah, he may be right. They going to push it. They going to push it, bro, for sure. It has the 4K th- uh, graphics, 240 frames per second. It ain't no joke, bro. They might have put some real, real power in this thing, man. And yeah, I'm calling it actually going to be about fourteen hundred dollars. But they're going to sell out immediately because it's going to be such a hot commodity item for like collectors. Like, I want, I want one. I want one to say I got a KFC console. Yep, and you can do virtual reality on here. You can do virtual reality games on here too. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I don't. I I don't believe in. We've never seen a, a computer or a video game slash air fryer before. It, it's looking like a bomb to me. I feel like that first generation might be the cause of some some death, some houses becoming <laughs> extra crispy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody oh, get the put, they know. put their chicken strips in there while they just going full Call of Duty mode and this stuff just light on fire. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. This uh Cleo, you get it. Get KFC to send you one so we can uh, see how I'm going to get on it, man. But I'm not just going to heat up the chicken. I want to put my wedges in there, too. You got to put your potato wedges alongside your chicken strips. And that. I got to see how it goes. People are going to be putting it on their carpet to play. Uh, it's gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about <laughs> Not the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> but check it out, guys. Uh, before we go on to we have a great interview with Corey Proctor coming up, I did want to shout out our sponsor, Caesars, all right? Open up a world of choices at over 50 resorts and casinos with Caesars Rewards and get rewarded for doing everything that you enjoy. Earn Caesars Reward credits when you play, dine, stay, bet, party, or relax at a Caesars Rewards destination. Then redeem for free or discounted hotel stays, uh, offers for dinings, shopping, uh, shows, and much, much more. Put simply, Caesars Rewards offers endless ways to earn the benefits you love. Learn more and sign up for free today at caesars.com slash my rewards. One more time, that is caesars.com slash my rewards. All right, let's get into this interview. Well, you want let's to do, do it? And let's go ahead and flip to the other side of this coin. Pip it. All right, guys, we got a really special guest for you guys today, man. Not only was he incredible on the football field, the man can play the hell out of a, out of a rock band guitar. Uh, the fact that you want your money to be handled right, you got to go and talk to our guest today, ladies and gentlemen. Corey Proctor in the building. Let's go. What's up, fellas? Good to be here. What's going on? Man? Man? What's going on? <laughs> this Chill, is a. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited about this interview for a couple of reasons, but one of the main ones is um, I, you, you rarely see athletes at at your level go into finance and wealth management. I mean, that's got to be. Uh, I, I'm I'm just very interested to see if that was a mind state you've had your entire career or if that's something that was built we will get into that um but we definitely want to get into the 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 gaming and stuff like that because uh obviously this is grid, gridiron gaming um how long you been gaming and uh what was the first system or game that that got you in oh shoot well the very first system i ever had as a kid was the atari mm. okay Come on. You, you, that's you, throwback you. for you right there i used to have the surf oh, yeah. game on that yep 
Sit here, looks like this. That's that this that's one it. handheld joystick. That's it. I gotta look this up. The first game game. On the Atari? Yeah. I'm not joking. An Atari oh, game. I remember I, I you took you find it? I found it. You guys gotta look it up. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> that is old school. Ooh. They had seven colors to choose from. <laughs> oh man. All right, so th- my question, my next question immediately after that is, did you ever beat this game? Dude, that was so long ago. I don't remember. I, you know what I remember is I used to be at my dad's. We used to, you know, fought back and forth between mom, between mom and dad's, and um, and my dad used to have this old toboggan, and we'd sled down this big old drive at the end of the end of the street, and I crashed into the thorn bushes and I sprained my wrist. And so I just remember sitting here playing with like a sprained wrist and and dad had to unwrap it every time. So I was like this little baby trying to baby it all the time. And it was just like, it was the funniest thing, but I Atari game. So we had that and it was the coolest thing, just being able to play that. That sounds sure. like a classic childhood. You had the toboggan outside, the, the sprained <laughs> wrist, the Atari. It was like, like Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> I read about you as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> So totally. I, I, I just, yeah. So I just have to know though, like what, what that kind of sounds like Bart though of what would be a great like football career for you because it's like now you're showing like the grit that you have because it's just like yo sprain wrist, but I still got to beat the smart. That's something that you. That's something you got to bring into your life just at just at times. So just uh, I just gotta I just gotta know for that. Just like. How long, just like, did you, have you been with the game? So you said Atari, um, how long, like, where did you stop? Where did you pick back up? Shoot, I think it, kind of like anybody, I mean, unless you're hardcore in it all the time, it was in waves for me, right? And so I, you know, it was Atari and then it kind of progressed with the same, you know, so into Sega, the original Sega, so it was a ton of Sonic and Mortal Kombat, you know, A-B-A-C-A-B-B was the original blood, blood code there. And uh, I still remember that stuff. Come on, man, that's, that's like crazy. You know. I know. <laughs> but um, into Sega, then Nintendo 64 when that came out, into into college when uh, PlayStation 2, we played Tiger Woods like it was, that was our thing. Okay. Like we come, you play Tiger Woods and you, you got the two joysticks and you were back. But you know, backspin, 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 and you're sitting there right. freaking out trying to. We we'd get a we legit we get a case of beer, all of us linemen, in college at Montana, Missoula, and it's freezing cold in off season, especially a case of beer on a Friday night, and we sit there and smash uh, a bunch of Tiger Woods golf <laughs> on PS2. A uh, <laughs> bunch of football players came together, got drunk, and played golf. <laughs> Virtual <laughs> golf at that. Real quick, because I, I have to ask, I've asked every athlete because it's it's either one or the other. Um, you know, obviously you guys are on the field all day training. You know, you're, you're, when you're not on the field, you, you guys are looking at tape and reviewing the, the tape and all that stuff. It's almost like you guys live and eat football. So I always have to ask, where did Madden fall into gaming? Were you guys like really into it or were you guys like done with football? You just wanted to play something else when you got on the console? No, well, I mean, I don't know if that ever it came in because, I mean, I remember, uh, play, oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you go right here. Here. That's great. <laughs> 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 uh, one, you can have one. Just asking for Christmas cookies over here. Uh, which, which kind? You got the Santa kind, the, the Christmas tree kind, or the star kind? We got them all. Oh, okay. Variety. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, 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 uh, that baby girl loves to do that every year, man. She make cookies and then we just go kill them, which is, come on, lime and appetite. That is not something that's good in my household because. <laughs> but why do we grow out of that? I'm making Christmas cookies that you just inspired me. I'm going to make Christmas cookies this year. Why? I don't want to grow out of that. I want to make some cookies, little trees. Big things. <laughs> yeah. You're right, but when you're like fighting against a bag of Doritos your whole life, you know, f- food is an addiction. <laughs> it's a funny visual. <laughs> oh, man. 
That's, I was a chubby kid. We moved around a whole lot, and so I dove deep into that bag. It was crazy. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. You were talking about Madden, uh, how bad oh, it was. Yeah, like like I, I remember that coming out. Like I, I think it was PlayStation, or I can't remember what it was. It was I think it was a college Y2K or something when it came out, and that's when I was on my first video game and got to be got to see, at least see my number. Montana was on it, and and then we had a little bit when I was when I come uh, into the league, and even then it was still a lot of first person shooter games. And mm -hmm. and so we'd be you know we'd be screwing around and I think uh, I think that was kind of born from Doom right from PC and then mm -hmm. um, and then coming into what uh, I think 007 on N64 and then into um, into more of the Halo I think I remember freshman year in college we were on a Halo binge in the in the dorm room for a while and so you'd be up all night long going on that one and so that wasn't good because now you're a zombie going to class the next day and you're supposed to operate like this. So it's, you know, that was a lot, but I don't, it wasn't, a, I don't remember a ton of Madden coming in and played a little bit, but um, what was, I remember there was the touchdown. Oh shoot. I remember cause I always ran like uh, the toss flea flicker to, it was on N64. I forget the name of that game, Blitz? but there was, what's that? Blitz, NFL Blitz. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Nice. Yeah. Oh, everyone they had him that. in the arcade too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love yeah, that. Nice yeah. <laughs> that's a I great one, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that one. Matt, man was some for me, but I know other guys were into it a lot more. And then as you came into the league, it was um, some of the some of the soccer games. And I forget the names, but I just, that's just what I remember them throwing stuff around. So. I always jumped into like first shoot. I like Halo a lot, and uh, and then Tiger Woods was always one of my favorites. Or, or any Mortal Kombat game, any of the fighter games, those are always cool to me. That's Big fighter, okay. Yeah, yeah it's crazy to see how far even fighting games have come from. You know, the Mortal Kombat era, for instance, like the first Mortal Kombat one, two, and three were arcade cabinet games, and you know, you the fact that you know you still remember the codes that turn the blood on is it's just crazy to me because that really was a thing. Mortal Kombat was so big. They're the reason we have a rating system in video games, just because of the blood. That was never in play until Mortal Kombat had fatalities. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you say first-person shooters are your thing, man. Uh, you know, Halo is getting ready to come out on the next-gen consoles. Call of Duty is just dominating as of right now. Um, have you had a chance to check out any of the new gameplay or any of the new, you know, uh, modes for, for Call of Duty? I haven't, I haven't lately. I mean, it's just to be honest, in the last few years, I've gotten out of it uh, quite a bit and into my business. And just because we got, you saw a baby girl come in and we got, she's almost six. And then we got a one-year-old boy and he's all boy. This dude is smashing up the house right now, just as a one-year-old. So, uh, you know, so attention has gotten away a bunch. So I'm like, I'd love to jump into it a whole lot more. It's, you know, my time gets taken away from clients and, and everything else right now. So mm -hmm. that's all. It sounds like you might have a future football player, though. <laughs> oh, my God. If he's already sticking to the house. <laughs> this guy. Hold on. Well, you saw baby girl. Here's, yeah, she's, she's sitting there crawling around right now. This is Hank. This is our boy. Oh, shout cornerback. out to young Hank. <laughs> cornerback. For sure, cornerback. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, I mean, he's I had a tiger. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's awesome. He's like he grunts like me. Grace, Grace is a she's a total tomboy. She wants to be in a skirt, but she likes to hunt, so she comes with me to hunt. And so it's 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 crazy, man. We got some we got some amazing kids, and it's, they they are a handful. That is for sure. Oh for man, sure. a hunter and a football player it sounds like it. <laughs> That's dope. So I did want to talk to you a little bit. You mentioned uh, before we got started esports and how you briefly got into that. A couple of uh, uh, training exercises and even a house uh, that you guys could like kind of hone your skills. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, um, we did. I, I got asked to do a celebrity gig one time, and it was me, David Bueller, one of our, our kickers we had with the Cowboys, and it was a third guy. I can't quite remember who that was but 
uh, we were essentially uh, we were we got asked to do this appearance, and there were, at the Dallas Convention Center was this big gaming tournament that was going on. And I remember they had a PC, um, I think they had PlayStation, and then Xbox going on. Like those three were the main ones, and they had some game releases tied to it. And the new Halo game I think had come out, and so part of the deals we had to play against this pro team, right? And these are all we're like mid to late twenties. RAs now, and these guys are all mid-teens, maybe late teens at the most. And That's already not fair. <laughs> I know. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, we do a warm-up game. I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good because I got some I got some kills. And even the guys that came in, the pro guys, they were like, all right, who's who's doing something? Okay, this guy, they point to me. This guy's got some kills. He might have something. And they come in, and they just absolutely disgustingly wipe the floor with us. And I, mean, I don't think I think I got one, you know, and you're just, this is gross. It was over in a matter of minutes. And so they were, <laughs> I think we played the second game. And it was the exact same result, but, um, but it was cool. Cause all right, you know, now I just don't even want to play anymore, but I'm talking to these guys and, and we're, I'm just like, Hey, what's because they make money doing this, right? We went a tournament. We got a, we get a cash first prize and, I'm like, mm -hmm. what do your guys' lives look like? And they start sharing how, like, man, we got house. We got a whole house that is our training room. That's our nine to five. We go to work every day. And each house is, or each room is designated for a certain training time. One's for, like, flanking, and we co-op and try to learn how to flank the enemy. Or another one is for snipers. And so I remember I was talking to one of the sniper guys, and he goes, well, look, if you want to get better at it, he goes, just put the piece of tape or, uh, piece of tape a square box around where the target is on your on your target on the TV. And he goes, anything that falls into that square is when you fire, right? It gives you a bigger target to look through instead of the, the little tiny one or the uh, little tiny one that's normally on it. And he goes, that's how we train. And because you know how it is, like any of those first person shooters, you're getting knocked. There's always a sniper that's knocking everybody off. And has a million yeah. kills, and yeah. and he goes, "That's how we do it." And we just smash people with that, and that's all it is. And you know, I'm like, I, okay, I, wow, wow. I was naive enough to think that the way you, the way you trained was to just keep trying. Like I thought, if you wanted to be a sniper, you just kept trying and you kept getting in there to keep. That is wow. That is like some boot camp level training. That is incredible. Yo, did you like, get to anything? The what? That's a crazy life hack to the game. The fact that you, they were at the crib and figured out, yo, let's tape something to our actual physical TV, and we know that's the hitbox no matter what. Like it makes sense right. now when I see people, when I see recap videos of guys quick scoping is because they know it's right there. It's just a quick lift, and how did you hit me? But they know because of the dang hitbox. Well, we just got the inside scoop, so now I know. <laughs> no, I know. Jesus, wow. <laughs> And here's what people don't talk about enough. Nothing will humble you. Like when you when you're playing with your friends in the room and somebody's better than you and they kind of beat you, like you're mad. You, you could get actually pretty mad. But the people when you're online, the the skill level is just out of this world. It it will literally make you stop playing the game. Like jumping in Call of Duty or Street Fighter online. It will humble you. And and that's why we host. <laughs> that's why we host these things. I will never get into competitive gaming because no matter how hard I try, there is a little, you know, seven, 13 year old kid across the world that will wash me every time. So there's mm -hmm. why? <laughs> I'm 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 good. I'll just watch. <laughs> oh, man, I was cracked up. What is I I was I was cracked up, man, because I'll get on with the headphones. Especially because when I got hurt, I, I got hurt when I was in Miami, ruptured my patella tendon. I had a whole lot of surgeries, and I was laid up for a couple of years on the couch. Uh, and so that, that's when I first, actually, the first time I, I took the headphones and would sat there and, and would talk with guys, and I crack up at these guys that would talk trash because every every time I would vo uh, vo you know say something or voice up, there was always this little kid that would be like, "Dang man, how old are you?" You're like 50 years old coming on here playing a game. And I'm like, shut up, man. I'm 13. I just have a mature <laughs> voice. You know? and, and, 
That's what I yell. I'm like, Ma, give me some Tortitas pizza rolls or something like that. <laughs> With the deep voice? But the trash on, talk is the best. Yeah. I'm a 12-year-old girl. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I, I mean, you should ask them, what age are you supposed to stop playing video games? Because I don't think there is one. There are uh, 60 year olds doing TikTok right now. You got you just do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> so we did want to yeah. touch on, uh, you know, the actual football stuff, uh, you know, just for, you know, pe people who are, are growing up either as an athlete or as an esports, because, you know, pe these people in esports are known as athletes. Now, they're, they might not be doing as much physical work, but, you know, like you said, they were doing nine to five looking over tape. It is very, very athletic. So, you know, for people in either of those fields, what did you do mentally to prepare for games? Like, what did you have like a ritual? Did you have like a song that you played? Like, what, what did you do mentally to, to get there? I, I treated game days the same as every other day. <clears throat> and, to, and honestly, these habits from the game carried over to what do I do now, what I do now that's kept me consistent. And, and so like, even, even I'm, I, I get up every day at five, I get up and read, I consume some something to make sure I'm, I'm sharp mentally and, and that I'm not just an empty tank trying to pour out onto you guys, right? That I actually some, have some substance in the cup and, uh, and I consume something and then I, you know, I go eat and I get to, or I get a workout and I get to get to work. Well, the same thing I would treat on game days. Normally I'm at the facility at least by six. And so I'll get up at the same time and I'll consume something, same thing. I'll read, maybe it's watch, watch, I don't know, watch the news for a little bit, or if you want to game for a little bit, is that, if that's your thing. And you just kind of get your mind and your body going for the day. Uh, and that, that is the, cause you're already in that habit already. And especially when it's game day, when it's work day, right? You want to keep in that same habit. So your body's still awake and alert and, and operating in that same fashion. So, you know, you might have rested the day before, but game day, wake up at the same time, go through your, your same ritual that you would do during the week. And, and and keep your body in that operating fashion. So when you do that, you're you're ready when you hit that game time, right? You're you're already alert, or or your body's preparing itself to to perform at a level that it's been used to performing all week. Instead of changing it up on the game all uh, game day all the time, and maybe laying in bed all day long. Um, I hate it, man. I hate Sunday night football games. I hate it because you're waiting around all day long. For this game to start, I hated it, and so you know, a lot of times coaches, you'll see this in colleges too, where coaches, you know, might take them out. All right, we're going for a walk, and we'll walk around the block just to get guys moving. Well, um, you know, okay, that's cool, but I, I would, even if it was a game day, I might go uh, walk on the treadmill or walk around the block several times to just get my body moving. So I was even more prepared for that night. So. It might differ a little bit each time, but keep keep consistent in whatever behaviors you have. And that's that's a huge piece. And so as long as you're consistent, you'll stay consistent in that performance. A lot of guys, uh, they get in trouble because, you know, their play might go up and down. Hold on. Their play might go up and down, like all good one week and just drop off, you know, like throw five touchdowns, throw five picks. And, and, mm -hmm. and really, and okay, that doesn't guarantee any sort of performance when you do the same thing. But... If I'm staying consistent in all my habits, physically, mentally, uh, and hopefully like even emotionally and spiritually, uh, you know, I can at least level that play out where I'm staying at a consistent place. And if you guys know what you're getting with me, uh, you can predict, you predict more into the future. I uh, like, I, I know, I know Corey does this when he works. He's usually this, he's usually five minutes earlier, five minutes late, whatever. I can count on these behaviors to come in. Uh, and so I can predict our, my day according to that. And so that's, that's, a, that's a big thing uh, coaches are looking for, consistent, consistent players. So Discipline. For sure, for sure. That's, really, that's important. Yeah. That's people, I never thought you about know, that. Like people oh, – my, my bad. No, go ahead, Pat. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying, like, I never thought about players being kind of, like, annoyed at having the Sunday night game. Because that's so much different, like than having like a comedy show or a, or a concert at night. Like I have a football game tonight. Like that, that does seem like a lot at night, <laughs> and they usually start like around what, like five, five or six. Oh well, seven o'clock, especially when you think of a East Coast game, right? Mm. So now, like, if you're starting at 
uh, or, or even I say even if you're on the East Coast in a West Coast game. So the West Coast game is starting at seven o'clock. That's not starting until ten o'clock on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. That's oh, that's awful. And so mm-hmm. when I was in Detroit and we were on East Coast time, I remember we had a Monday night game, and it's so late. And, and okay, it's for TV. I get it, but um, you know you, you got to learn how to operate that somehow and, and adjust your timing for the day. So it's. It's hard to do, but you got to do. It. <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's, I guess it's worth 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 the uh, worth the investment, worth the payoff at the end of the day. That's facts. You know, in competition, yeah. there's always winners and losers, man. And you know, you could be as prepared as you want, and you can have all. You know, if you've crossed every T, you dotted every single I, you can walk into a competition, and you still may come out with a loss. How do you? How do you? How do you get ready to move forward even from that loss? You know, there's there's so much pressure on your shoulders. A lot of people crumble under pressure. We're humans. How do you take that loss, build from it? What could you tell the people about that? Oh, I mean, it kind of depends what kind of loss it is, right? But it's if you're always kind of in this move forward mode, mm-hmm. yeah, you'll have some disappointments, but you never have this I you know, you'll see a lot of guys that like what a Jordan. I think Jordan used to have that saying. He was like, I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. Right. And, uh, um, and it's funny because, you know, as, as volatile as our president is right now, he's very much like that. Right. Or he's crazy. Dude's insane. But right. um, he's like, he's like right now with these election results, he's like, I didn't lose. <laughs> I won. I'm just leaving. I'm leaving on my own. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's almost I like I understand that a little bit because when you're so used to this high performance all the time, you're like, I don't got time for that. And and so so a lot of guys, I mean, you'll see what where a lot of people look at players and they might think like this guy is full of himself or this guy's got a total ego issue. And I'm like, well, a lot of people have never have had to dealt with we're performing at such a high level um, that they, they don't know the actual, the full ego that it takes to be there. Well, it might not even be that this guy is egotistical in a sense that, but you do have to have a sense of ego to be able to handle your personal battles. Hmm. And, and so, and, and I actually got that from uh, Bill Parcells who, who'd love it. And this is a, per, this is a, 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 a team game, but just like, um, uh, Belichick, if you do your job, I come in, I do what I got to do, right? Now I'll help other t- other teammates. It's all great. But if I handle my business to the best that I can and I perform that well, I'm handling my slice, right? And if I can on you to handle your slice collectively, we're going to do some pretty badass things. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's a big deal. It's like I, and, and when you walk into the room, I know I have the power to influence a room and I, I can walk into a room of suits with a pair of shorts on. And know I have the power to 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 have an impact. I like that. Uh, just, just, a cool little yeah. bar. <laughs> That's dope. Uh, okay, cool. So before we get out of here, you know, we touched on gaming, we touched on football. I really want to get into your current work and just how you got into finance and, and wealth management. Because you know, obviously, when you are good at sports from a young age, you're thrown into life very fast, (laughs) you know, like money, contracts, other things. I know there's kids in the room, but you know, (laughs) I I just think that were were you always good with money? Is this something that came as you, as you went? Like, how did you get into your, your current work? Uh, It wasn't intended. Like I didn't plan on this at all. (laughs) And I I think where a big part of it ended up being, faith it was a faith journey really where it got kind of lit up like all these things that happened in my life um in order to come to this moment and so what had happened a lot like my you know my folks split early on a lot of people deal with that right and um and so not not to say anything crazy but my parents weren't great with money and and so some of those observations you know i knew i didn't want to have in my life. And so when I came into the league, I ended up, ended up being a real frugal guy. You know, I was the guy with, you know, long pockets, deep pockets, short arms. I'm not touching that thing, right? A T-Rex arms. And so, um, 
But one of my, what my mentor playing ball was Marco Rivera, um, who was at Green Bay for nine years, three-time Pro Bowl guard there. And he came down, signed a contract with the Cowboys, and he was the first guy. Man, I was letting this stack up in the bank, right? And so he was the first guy to say, what are you doing with your money? And I'm like, I, got, I had a case of water and a ketchup in my fridge. I didn't have anything going on. And and so he was like, all right, you got to do something with that. And you got to put it to work because cash is losing. And and so, all right, I, he ended up hooking me up with his, his advisor. It was a lady out of Wisconsin, and she killed it for me. She did a fantastic job. She never, never like, tried to blow up expectations. And, and because what ended up happening was I peppered her to death with questions, and she ended up learning me up in a really good way because I wanted to know what was going on. Like, where, where are you putting my money? What are you doing with this thing? And, uh, and so, I, and I tell people, look, I made minimum um, five out of my six years playing. And 10 years removed from the game uh, in November was, I just had my 10 year anniversary of my injury, but 10 years removed from the game, I am way better off now than I ever was in football. Wow. Mm. And that's and, and not, you know, there's a lot of guys you hear about all the stories of guys going broke yeah. or some issues. And look, this ain't a player thing, right? This, this is why people win Powerball and they go broke in a matter of uh, yep. years or a short time. This, this mm -hmm. ain't a player thing. This is a societal issue. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is where I'm like, we could do some better things in our school systems, but uh, ultimately it's on us to learn the business of our life. And, and if I don't understand the cash flow of, of uh, the house of Proctor, how can I ever understand the cash flow of your guys' business and stewarding that? And so I, I ended up just getting a really first class education from her and took a lot of flavor. And, uh, and so through a big faith journey, God kind of showed me all these steps into my life and gave me some good revelation through, through a ton of consumption of material. Mm -hmm. And it gave me material, it gave me substance, and then really lit up some areas that I didn't realize I became extremely proficient in. And, and so that's where it was where I started dabbling and, and she, she kind of planted the idea. She was like, you can do this, you know? And, and so anybody can do it if they want to. And so I started up Pro Capital Wealth Management, which is my own company, and just as an independent advisor and, I got a huge blessing from her because she was like, she goes, I'll sponsor you to take uh, your securities licenses and I don't have to take any overhead. You just go take care of, you go build your book, take care of business. And it's, that's a massive deal because, you know, if you're just starting out in this industry, you can easily give, give away 90% of your pay when I'm bringing on clients, you know, and mm -hmm. when, it's, when it's flipped the other way, you know, I'm taking my, all my pay home and so I can I can deal with a lot less clients uh, and a lot less assets under management, but it's 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 been a really amazing place because I'm not the average advisor. You know, I'm not the guy sitting here wearing the suit talking to you guys right now. Right. I, I, and I and I don't want that. And so it's a good it's a good place to be because shoot for every ten advisors, the average age is over sixty of a financial advisor, and for every ten that are retiring, three are replacing them right now. So it's, it's, it's a good industry to be in, but I, I love it because I can sit here and talk to you guys and, and we could be going over your finances and, uh, and I, I know this, but you know, a lot of, you know, this a lot of trash can come with money. And, um, but if I know a lot of emotion and baggage is with that, uh, a lot of times God gives me an opportunity to share something pretty powerful. And for people this year who have lost jobs, got a divorce, lost somebody they loved, to walk through that process with somebody and hopefully give them some juice to carry on to the next day is, is a pretty awesome place to be. And, and so from that, you end up being, all right, a good steward of money, but a whole lot more in somebody's life than, than just a guy who's taking care of their money. You know, I, I'm like, I, I want to give you faith in a time where faith is not real evident. So, mm -hmm. uh, Anyways, that's that's a lot, but it's I love no, it, man. It's, it's a passionate place for me. Great, that's that's no, that's that's awesome. That's literally the ideal mind state business wise when coming into new big money, doing the research, 
figuring it out, figuring out how to do it, figuring out who you need to work with to manage it and, and capitalizing off of it. Corey, this has been amazing. I know you got to get up out of here. We appreciate your time and your wisdom. Uh, I, I know Will is, has been a little quiet. He, his, his, he's having some mic issues. He's not shy. Uh, he was, he was sounding a little deep voiced. Corey was scared. He didn't know that's how he sounded. It was like witness protection. <laughs> but <we understand. laughs> but uh, Corey, Corey, we appreciate your time, man. And um, yeah, anytime you want to jump back on the sticks and uh, jump into gaming, hit us up. We'll, we'll, we'll meet with you online and we could shoot some stuff up or something. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Hey, man, I, I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. You guys got great attitudes and I, I'm thankful for it. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so man. much, sir. For sure, man. Have a good rest of your day. Happy holidays. You too. Sugar you cookies. Too. Merry Christmas. Sugar cookies. <laughs> Sugar cookies. <laughs> All right. We got to say, man, that was a great, great guest, man. Corey shared a whole lot of gems, man. Like, it's he, he's motivational. I'm not going to flex, bro. He's hella motivational. I was like, hey, man. And he has some bars. Pat, you picked up one of them. Which one did you pick up? You said he could walk into a room full of suits with his shorts on? Still control the room. And and the key to success, deep pockets, short T-Rex arms. I popped that. I peeped that, too. Don't yeah. touch it. <laughs> It's, it's great to see people with a, a mind state like that. Like I remember Marshawn Lynch said in an interview that he didn't even touch his NFL uh, checks. He was just living off of endorsements and stuff. And he was really, he was in an apartment. Like I really, really respect that because athletes, like I said, they get thrown into life very, very quickly. So to be that young and, and, and have that much money and still be smart with it and have the, the, the knowledge to do your research yourself. Like he's like, he also said, you're the only one in charge of the business of your life. So. That's dope that he made, he flipped it and made a whole business out of it. That's sick. Yes, indeed. I also yeah. like that he acknowledged that uh, it's not just like the, like, like the sports thing too. So I'm definitely glad that uh, he had mentioned that. Like this is a, this is a us thing when it comes to like financial stuff. Cause just like how you said, Pat, they have a way faster lifestyle too, but they, we both still have something very in common with that and the top mm -hmm. NFL player. And that's still, they can yeah. have bad money management just like we can. So for him to even yeah. say like, yo, to be doing something better, like education wise, and learn and do your due diligence and research. Like you said, it was mm -hmm. great dropping them gems, broken, fractured hand, and still beat the Smurfs. He didn't say he beat it, but I'm gonna say he beat it. He beat, beat the it with a broken hand. That's why he's still rich, man. That's why he still got money. That's lit. I love it. Yes, it yeah, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out another episode of Coin Toss. Once again, we'd like to thank Corey Proctor for stopping in. Once again, make sure you check out the Smash Bowls tournament on Thunder okay. Gaming's Twitch, twitch.tv slash Thunder Gaming. Make sure that you check out us as well, the Arcade Tokens on all of our social medias, the Arcade Tokens, our Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Arcade Tokens and our YouTube channel, as well as our personal Twitch, socials, and YouTube. Everything. Cleo Thomas, Patrick Cloud, except for Twitter, Pat's on your back. Uh, and as for me, it's Will Farrow, everything as well. Thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you next time. Later, guys.